Well, g'day curd nerds and welcome to another video tutorial. This one is Triple Pepper Jack and uh, it is a recompilation of three videos I made about two years ago, I believe, where I made one of the hottest cheeses that I've ever made. It was a scorcher. Now you may recognize the taste test by this thumbnail. Very, very hot and spicy. So don't forget to wait until the end of the video where I share some tips on what I would do differently to make this cheese uh, less crumblier and uh, a little bit less acidic. It did taste amazing once you got past that chili flavor, but uh, yeah, just I've recorded a bit about uh, lessons learned. Anyway, let's check out how Gav made triple pepper jack. Well, g'day curd nerds. Today we're going to learn how to make pepper jack. Well, this very special pepper jack, I've actually made it, uh, well, I'm going to call it triple pepper jack um, because not only does it have chili all the way through the the Monterey Jack. It also has chili oil on top and I've used a chipotle chili powder that I've used as a rub all over the cheese. Very interesting. I, hopefully it's going to be one of those uh, very spicy cheeses that a lot of people love. Anyway, enough waffling. Let's get on and see how we made the cheese. So the ingredients for this cheese are 10 litres or 10 quarts of whole cow's milk, an eighth of a teaspoon or 0.75 millilitres of mesophilic direct vat inoculated culture, or you can use one cup or 250 millilitres of buttermilk. I'm choosing to use buttermilk in this cheese. Half a teaspoon or 2.5 millilitres of calcium chloride, half a teaspoon or 2.5 millilitres of single strength liquid rennet. I'm using IMCU 200. Uh, two tablespoons, that's 30 millilitres, of non-iodized salt. Two tablespoons or 30 millilitres of dried chilli flakes. And the next two are optional. You can use a chipotle chilli powder for rubbing or chilli infused olive oil for rubbing as well. Now I'm turning the heat on there. Now I've got my two tablespoons of uh, chilli uh, flakes there. And I'm going to add those to two cups, which is 500 millilitres of water in a saucepan. So I've got the water there. Now I'm going to turn the heat on, bring that to the boil and then simmer for 10 minutes. And that'll make all of the chilli flavour impart into the water. Now once that's done, cover that and allow it to cool. Now I've poured out my... Mesophilic starter culture in the form of buttermilk. I'm using 250 millilitres or one cup of buttermilk in this recipe. So we're going to heat our milk to 32 degrees Celsius or 90 Fahrenheit. And once it's reached the target temperature, we're going to add in our preferred starter culture. Now, as I mentioned, I'm experimenting with this cheese and I am using buttermilk, but you can also use your mesophilic starter culture, the direct vat inoculated freeze-dried version. Anyway, I'm pouring my buttermilk into the milk. Make sure I got it all in there. And within the buttermilk, there are mesophilic starter cultures already, which is fantastic. So if you're short one day and don't have your uh, mesophilic uh, freeze-dried powder, then you can try using buttermilk. So give that a good stir all the way through to make sure the buttermilk is mixed through your milk. So once that's done, just take all your utensils out, cover and allow to ripen for 45 minutes at the target temperature of 32 Celsius or 90 Fahrenheit. Okay, once the time has elapsed, just give that another stir so that we can measure the temperature and it's all even. And the temperature has dropped down a little bit by one degree Celsius, but that's okay. So we're going to add in our other ingredients now. I'm going to add in my calcium chloride. Now I'm using pasteurized and homogenized milk. I decided to go for the cheapest milk I could get. 
but it wasn't ultra pasteurized, just normal pasteurized. Now I'm adding the calcium chloride back in to restore some of the soluble calcium that was lost during pasteurization. Now the next ingredient going in is the rennet solution. That's mixed with a quarter cup of non-chlorinated water. And we stir that all the way through the milk for no more than one minute. Okay, that's stirred enough. Pop the lid on and we're going to allow the milk to set for 40 minutes at 32 degrees Celsius, 90 Fahrenheit. Okay, once that has elapsed, I'm going to check for a clean break. Now I'm just using my knife and then flip it on the edge and then lift it up. And if it looks like a nice clean line there, which it does, that's fantastic. If you don't get that, then wait another 10 minutes and then check it again. Now I'm going to cut the curds into 1.25 centimetres or half inch cubes. So I've just done the horizontals there with my curd harp and I'm doing the vertical cuts with my curd knife. Now, if you don't have a curd harp, then just angle your knife at 45 degrees and do that all the way around and you'll get a fairly even sort of cube. So I'm just doing the perpendicular cuts there. I've done the first cuts one way and then I'm at a 90 degree angle I'm doing the other cut. I'm trying to make them as even as I possibly can. Okay, just making sure that they're all cut through. Just a little quick stir there. And then I'm going to let the curd cubes heal for 10 minutes. Now, I normally only let them sit for five minutes, but because it's pasteurized and homogenized milk, I thought I'd leave that additional time so they firm up a little bit more. So we're using the spoon to lift and move the curds around a little bit just gently at first to ensure they're all cut. Now if you find that you have some big large chunks in there, then just cut them with the side of your spoon as you're stirring. Now I'm reapplying the heat because we're going to stir for a while and heat the milk up. Now this heating phase, which is going to start in a minute, uh, allows a lot more whey to be expelled. Now the temperatures drop down nearly a 1.8 degrees of, a, of, a cent, of centigrade which is okay but we're heating the milk up now so we're going to gently stir the curds for 40 minutes slowly heating to 38 degrees celsius 100 fahrenheit now as i mentioned we do this slowly because we want the whey to be released slowly from the cube curds and you can see there they're fairly small there after the 40 minutes of stirring and we're about uh, 37.8 Celsius. But uh, once you're at that target temperature, we now stir for another 30 minutes. This is going to release even more whey, and the cubes uh, of curd are going to be a lot, lot smaller. So 30 minutes later, they are even smaller. Just check the temperature, make sure I was at the right one. We got 37.8, which is what I started with. So 38 we're kind of aiming for, which is 100 Fahrenheit. Okay, I'm going to do the magic test now to make sure that the curd is sufficiently stirred. I'm going to grab a handful, gently squeeze. Now, if they form a ball, that's fantastic. And if the ball can be broken apart just with your thumb like that, then it's ready to press and drain. Now, if it's not, stir for, a, for another 10 minutes and then test it again. Okay, over to the sink area. I've got a cheesecloth line colander there, and I'm just pouring the curd through and draining them off. Now, once you've got a fair bit of the moisture out, I'm just uh, lifting the bag there a little bit. I'm going to put it back into the pot. Squeeze out your cheesecloth because we're going to need that again in a minute. Okay, now we're going to get our chilli mixture that is now fully cooled. And we're going to tip the chilli flakes and the chilli water into the curds. 
looks like a nice dark red there. Now we're going to gently stir the chilli and the water through the curds to impart a nice chilli flavour. Now I did taste it at this stage. They are very hot. <laughs> but that's good. Now we're going to get our cheese salt, which is basically just non-iodized salt. Um, and uh, I'm going to put in two tablespoons there. Now when we do mill our salt through the uh, curds, we make sure that we are not too rough with it. Uh, if you start seeing the whey become cloudy, you're overworking the curds, uh, releasing too much fat, which we want in the cheese. So sprinkling the second spoon there, and we're just going to gently mix that through. Okay, that's good enough. Now we're going to grab our cheese basket. Now I'm using a 165 milliliter or uh, I think it's a 6 inch diameter or a cheese basket. Line that with the cheesecloth I had before. And now I'm going to fill it with the curds. Get it all in there then. Now this is the best way to make sure that your chilli flakes are evenly distributed all the way through your cheese is by milling them in first. Don't try and make layers or anything like that through the cheese, it just doesn't work. Okay, so we're going to press the cheese now for its first pressing to form the initial rind. So I'm using a spring press here. So we're going to press it 15 kilograms or 33 pounds for one hour. And that will help uh, close up the curds and give us an even looking rind. Okay, so an hour has elapsed. I'm going to remove the cheese from the press. Now just be gentle at this stage because it may not have formed correctly, but just be gentle. And that looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to flip that over gently, smooth out the cheesecloth, put it in the middle, and we're going to rewrap that. Oh, just a quick snap there. Now we're going to press it at a higher pressure now, 22 kilograms or 50 pounds for at least 12 hours. Now usually this is overnight. By the time I finished putting it into the press, it was about 8 o'clock at night, so ready to take it out uh, at 8 o'clock in the morning. So that's my uh, spring press fully closed and that gives me a good indication that's about 50 pounds of pressure. Okay, so the next day we're going to remove the cheese from the press. I found that it was very tight in there. So we're going to remove that from the press. We're going to air dry for two to three days. I'm going to turn twice daily until touch dry. Now there was a bit of a burr, so I cut that off because normally I find that uh, mould actually harbours in those bits. That's the first place mould likes to grow. Anyway, so I tried a little bit of the curd and it was very hot, <laughs> as in spicy hot. Okay, so we'll put that on the side. And we'll air dry that, as I said, for two to three days. So this is after three days and you can see that uh, significant drying around the edges and it's touch dry to handle. Now you can see the chilli infused olive oil I'm going to use there and the chipotle chilli powder that I'm going to rub it with. So we're up to the rubbing stage. Now you can skip this if you want to, if you think it's going to be hot enough. But I thought, what the heck? I'm going all the way and we're going to have a triple pepper jack. So a bit of the chilli infused olive oil and I put that over all surfaces and this is going to help um, the chilli powder to stick to it. Now the chilli powder itself was more smoky than, uh, than spicy I suppose. So I put a teaspoon over each surface. Surface? Surface? Surface. 
So putting that over all of the cheese. The olive oil helps it to stick, which is good. So I'm rubbing that in, hoping that the smoky um, chilli flavour uh, gets imparted into the cheese itself. So this is the first rub cheese I've actually ever made, so um, it's going to be very interesting to see what it tastes like. Mmm, looks good. Okay, so just a quick rub to make sure it's all even all over the cheese. Any bits that are on the board, I certainly put them back on again. There we go, that looks really nice. So just on the bamboo mat for a second, until I decide what to do with it. So I'm just going to dry off my, uh, my chopping board there, pop it on top. Now there's a decision whether you want to naturally um, ripen this or vacuum pack it. So if you're going to naturally ripen it, do it at 10 degrees or 10 to 13 or 50 to 55 Fahrenheit at 80% relative humidity for three months during the first week, twice weekly uh, for even ripening and then once a week is fine. Now I'm going to choose to vacuum pack because I want the flavours to infuse into the cheese. So this one was my um, absolute favourite to make so far this year anyway. Uh, a lot of love went into this cheese. Obviously, I made it in the Monterey Jack style. Um, so, therefore, it is an authentic pepper jack cheese. Not only does it have the dried chilli through it, as you saw, but the oil, chilli-infused oil, as well as the chipotle chilli powder that I used as a rub all over the cheese. I'm going to mature this for three months. I'm kind of tossing up whether to... Um, do a natural rind or a vacuum pack it. I think vacuum pack can be much better um, and it'll help the chili rub to infuse into the cheese itself, get a little bit more kick of flavour. So for those that, are, that don't know, the chipotle um, chili powder is actually a smoked chili that then they dry, rehydrate, sorry, dehydrate and grind. So uh, three months time, we'll come back and do the taste test for this one. Well, g'day curd nerds. Today I'm going to give an update for the triple pepper jack. Now, I noticed that, and I checked the other day, no word of a lie, and this was fine. Now, I've got all this seepage. So very similar to the question that I had in uh, one of the po podcast episodes recently, um, where the gent said, I can't remember his name, I'm sorry about that. He said he had seepage. Um, from the uh, the triple jack. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut open the seal, drain this all out, put it in a new bag, and uh, fingers crossed the cheese will be okay. Um, I'm going to pat it dry as well, and uh, with paper towel, and give it a new co coating of um, the chipotle chili powder. It's going to be pretty wicked, I reckon. Anyway, let's get on and uh, fix this up, shall we? So you can see um, closer up there the seepage in the of the whey is coming out and that's got all the spices and stuff. The, um, the rub that I had on it, it's obviously not working out as best as I thought it would, but I'll clean this up and we'll see how that goes. So let's do that now. So just over the sink, I'm just, um, the, steel, the seal's still intact of course. There we go, and you can see a fair bit of the, there's a lot of liquid that came out then. So that's made this cheese go very firm, and you can see a fair bit there, so let's dry that all off. Lots of nice big chilli bits in it still, so <laughs> that chilli is actually in the cheese itself, that's not from the rub. Alright, so let's put that on it. Let's... Now 
Now I don't know what caused this weeping, um, whether I didn't press the cheese enough and the vacuum bag drew out a little bit more of the moisture. But this is going to make this a fairly dry cheese now. So anyway, I don't think there's going to be too many issues. Get rid of the bag. And just get a board. So will I oil it and uh, let it dry out naturally? I think I might. Right, where'd my oil go? In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to air dry this. That's what I'll do. I won't oil it. I'll let this air dry for a few days. Uh, and then I'll give it another coating of oil and uh, let it mature naturally. Uh, and then I'll give it a bit of a rub as well. And we'll see where we go from there. So, yeah, that's the cheese. So as you saw, that was unexpected. So there's a bit of whey seepage. So I really have to get this air dried now. Um, so I'll do that over the next couple of days to make sure it's touch dry again. Um, and then I'll give it another coat of oil and uh, then I'll put some more rub on top. So it'll be even spicier than what I thought it would be before. Hopefully this doesn't do it again. So what I might do is naturally ripen. I've got another ripening box, the last one I've got and basically I'll um, put it into the cheese cave and mature it at the right temperature. It's about 13 degrees Celsius uh, in there at the moment. So hoping it will uh, keep a natural rind and not so many molds will attack it. And we'll see how we go from there. Still about the 16th of September is the taste test date. So keep that in mind. Well, g'day curd nerds. Today we are having a taste test for one of the most anticipated cheeses on the channel and that is the triple pepper jack and just to make sure that we've got our safety equipment on hand i've got our trusty assistant ben who will show you the safety equipment now yes folks we've got a fire extinguisher just in case it's a little bit too hot but on hand i've also got a glass of milk that everybody knows that dampens the taste of chili. We'll see how that goes. Okay, so we'll get into the taste test now. Let's open up the uh, bag. Oh, smell, it smells hot. There it is. What a beautiful looking cheese. Okay, so let's get the trusty cutting board. Oh no, before I do that, I'll just pat it down a little bit. It's a little bit moist, just a little. I've got my two trusty assistants here again to help me. I don't know how much help they're gonna be, but one of him's licking his lips for that cheese, but there's no way he's going to be able to eat this. Anyway. Right. Cutting board on. Wire over. Let's get it tight. Oh, it's cutting well. There we go, beautiful chili all the way through it. Looks fantastic. Just cut it again. Oh, 
Oh, I can feel the resistance of the chilies. More chilies, lots of seeds. My goodness, this is going to be hot. Oh, so let's just move this board out the way. Now, it's fairly crumbly, which I really did expect it to be a little bit moister than this, but considering the moisture of the cheese when we vacuum packed and it came out into the bag and it was really, really moist and there was whey everywhere, uh, I'm not surprised that it's crumbly, but uh, it's cut a bit off. Yes, yeah, very crumbly, but that's okay. The proof is in the tasting. So let's get a, let's wipe my hands. Get a cracker, get my milk handy. Smells like, mm, chili rub, <laughs> who knows, anyway. Oh, bloody hell. <clears throat> that is very, very spicy. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's... Oh. oh. I think I've got water in my eyes. Oh, my goodness. It's a nice cheese, don't get me wrong. This is absolutely salted correctly, there's no bitterness. It's creamy, but my goodness. She's a hot one. <coughs> mm. 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 Let's have another one, shall we? Before I do though, Oh. Oh. Mm, absolutely delicious. I can feel or can't feel the front of my tongue. <clears throat> it's almost like eating oh shrew Sriracha chili sauce. Oh. oh, goodness me. But it is nice. I, nothing wrong with the flavour, it's just that <clears throat> it's a very hot and spicy cheese. Whew. Oh, it's a beauty, it really is good. That's a nice cheese. Now, if you are into crumbly, um, but smooth, it's not, it's not um, dry, even though it looks dry, but it's not a lot of moisture in there, or maybe it's the saliva reacting with all the chili. <coughs> oh. Where'd that safety number go? I think I need the fire extinguisher. <laughs> oh, no, nah, good cheese, good cheese. Now, even though the whey came out, um, I, I would, what would I do differently? Well, I think I would let it air dry a little bit more. And I think I would let it um, form a natural rind in the cheese cave for about a week and then I would wax it. I wouldn't vacuum pack it. I, I think that the, the initial vacuum packing just held the cheese far too tight and it squeezed out a lot of the way. Plus, as we found, we think there might've been salt in the Chipotle chili rub as well. 
uh, and that drew out a lot of the moisture. But the cheese is absolutely fantastic. If you want to impress your friends who really like hot and spicy food, then this triple pepper jack is the cheese for you, it really is. Uh, and it's certainly the cheese for me. I'll be having it in small pieces <coughs> and maybe give some of this one away. But it's a delightful cheese. So there you have it. What would I do differently? Well, first of all, I wouldn't trust my wife's exposure on her camera when doing a taste test video. I'd uh, turn the exposure down a little bit and it wouldn't be as bright as it was. Anyway, that aside, what would I do differently to the cheese? Well, I would not use buttermilk as a starter culture, which I was kind of experimenting with. Uh, it didn't seem to make too much of a difference initially when I was making the cheese. However, as it matured, it obviously became more and more acidic, and that's why it became crumbly. Uh, Monterey Jack or Pepper Jack is usually not that crumbly. Uh, so what I would have done is just used a normal uh, direct vat inoculated starter culture. Uh, and that probably would have fixed it all up. I also checked initially with the chili chipotle rub that I used, and I didn't think it had any salt in it. However, I think it must have, because that's why it drew out all of that extra whey in the, uh, in the vacuum pack bag, and you saw that seepage in the middle of the video. So check if your pepper rub has extra salt added to it. I think mine did. Uh, which is why it drew it out. However, having said that, I think it was salted sufficiently. Uh, certainly it didn't have any bitterness to the cheese, so I was very surprised uh, because of all that extra whey that came out. Certainly very crumbly. Now, if you want to check out something that I did extra with the triple pepper jack cheese, I turned it into a spicy American cheese. Now, you can catch the video of that uh, over here. Well, don't forget that you can also buy the kit for this cheese. You could use the hard cheese kit um, and add in whatever extras you need to. Anyway, thanks for watching, Curd Nerds, and I'll see you next time.